Welcome back to Duresta's Cut. That's me. I'm Jimmy Duresta. I'm visiting my favorite store, Lighting Plus, on Broadway in Manhattan. I'm getting some ingredients for my next project. I'm getting two lamp bases that have adjustable electric in them so you could dim the light. And I'm getting the parts. I'm getting some mounting tubes and some screws and all the necessary things to mount my light base inside of my project. Getting some plugs. And I'm going to pick up some fancy wire. It's about $2 a foot. I'm going to get some fancy Edison bulbs with that amber wire in there that doesn't get too bright. Everybody thinks they're sexy and fun. You see them in a lot of bars in and around the world. And now back to my shop. And this piece of scrap inspired this project. This is a piece of a stripper pole. I did like a restaurant table on this and had a lot of little pieces left over. And I always save them. You never know where they're going to come in handy. And just finding that piece inspired this whole project. I'm in the process of moving. And so I am uh, cleaning up and a lot of stuff is churning up. And so this idea came to me. And I am making a mounting base right now out of brass. And this is some scrap brass I had laying around. So just a scrap from both of these projects are, were inspired by just having the pieces around. And this is 11 gauge brass that I used for, recently I made a sign for a blade and bow whiskey company and these are the leftover parts and I'm center drilling them. that's the actual base that's going to carry the the lamp base the the part and now here I'm just soldering them in I'm using just regular electric solder which which uh, solders very easily because it's a low temperature low temperature anywhere around three to four hundred degrees as opposed to silver solder which would need to be much much hotter somewhere in the twelve hundred to thirteen hundred degree range and now I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want that on off switch to stick out of the body. And these are going to be tails as opposed to what the obvious thing would be. So they're going to be tails on these little creatures. And the on off switch, the rear stat is going to stick out of their tail. And there I'm just checking the fit. Everything seems to go good. And now they're going to be little bots, little like metal brass robots. And I'm freestyling the arms and the legs. This is stuff I've played with over the years. I've been inspired by Alessi Design, it's a company that makes a lot of household goods that are, are sort of uh, anthropomorphized, I don't know if that's the right way, made into look like humans. And so if I'm totally wrong on that, maybe I'll come back and edit out that word. But when you take something and make it look humanish, and so that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking these lamps and they always tend to be comical. I just thought the idea of the light bulb sticking up out of the tube, specifically that long skinny light bulb, would be a, a funny look. And then give it arms and legs, and we have a, an oddball robot. Now with this 11 gauge brass, I'm just cutting it on the band, so it cuts just as well as wood. No need to slow the blade down. It cuts really good. And I'm, I'm pre-tinning. That's when you get solder on both pieces you're about to attach. It makes working with two hands better, because usually you have to hold the two pieces together, and then with a third hand get the solder in there but if you pre-tin both parts like I'm doing here so you see me pre-tinning the edge of that and then pre-tinning my mark on the on the body <clears throat> and I hold it in place until it cures and I'm good there we go and I'm doing the other leg and I'm using that steel weight everything to fixture the parts in place is is helpful anything you just don't know where how and now here I get to choose the gesture obviously I'm the creator of this object so I can do whatever I want I ended up bending the hands back off camera so the hands kind of go backwards a little bit toward the end. And now here you see me working up the second robot and I'm going to have him crawling up the wall. So here I'm using the table as the metaphor for the wall. Did you notice there I, I messed up my drawing so I just spray glued another piece over. So that's a simple trick if you're going to do quick sketches. Just cover the piece with another piece of paper. And here I'm just cutting out these hands and they're both different as opposed to the first set of hands I made for the figurine where they were both the same. So each one is kind of drawn in a different gesture. And uh, then I do the legs. And the idea for the legs is, oh, you notice here I bend the hands back a little bit on the anvil so that when he's reaching on the wall, his body is, is in the air and his arms are on the wall. Again, just trying to figure out how to fixture these things in place. And whatever it takes, you'll notice by the time I put the legs, I finally figured out just to wire things in place, which is something I didn't think of until about the end of the project. I say it all the time, I'll say it again, I'll say it a million times. You go to school in the beginning of a project and at the end you're an expert. And so here are the legs. 
I ended up drawing them one way and I flopped them over because my buddy was in the shop and he thought it would look better if they were done the other way. We kept pretending to climb up a ladder to see where and how our knees would be in relationship to our elbows. And this seemed to be the most natural way. It was funny, we just kept pretending to climb stuff in midair. And there you go. And the feet, the gesture of the feet folding back on the on the shin was a real legitimate look. There you see I fixtured the leg there with a piece of wire. And now I scotch bright them and I'm ready to assemble them. Just a little scotch bright on the whole thing. Now I'm, I'm going to just uh, make something very clear to my European friends. Every time I make a lamp, everybody tells me I'm doing it wrong and that this should be a ground. Some lamps have grounds and in America some lamps don't. If you go to a Home Depot or a Lowe's and you buy a lamp kit, you can buy a lamp that's manufactured and designed to be taken apart and put back together by the client that has no ground. So when you go to the lamp store, you buy a plug that has two prongs and you buy a wire that has two wires and you buy a lamp base that has two screws. So that's one for each side. There is no third ground. And make that absolutely clear because someone's going to comment that this is going to kill somebody or electrocute them. And I promise you it won't. I've made... I must have made at least 50 lamps in my 30 plus years making stuff. And all the lamps I've ever made still work. Because a lot of them are at my mother's house and friends have them. And nobody has died as far as I could tell. So, Lamp kits are available in most stores, most hardware stores. And just follow the instructions. And the, really the most important part of making a lamp is making these connections tight and strong and not loose. Because when you have loose wires is when you get fires. There's a rhyme. Loose wires cause fires. You want to make sure your connections are tight and that all your possible areas for shorting are reduced by making sure that the casing of the wire goes right up to the screw head. And there you go. I have my two figurines, my lamp, my brass lamp robots. And ultimately hang them on the wall. You'll see now in just a second. These are fun. These are, these are probably going to inspire a more finished version, ultimately. But I, I really like the one climbing on the wall much better than the standing one because the legs in profile, or in silhouette rather, look, look better than when you look straight on. The figurine standing there, the, it's kind of hard to get the gesture of the legs with just flat material like that. But there you go. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.